Play lots of music, Chicago style music, the way I learned when I was just a boy. We play lots of music, that's it all called the music, directly from Chicago, Illinois. We are joined right now by the chairman of the board of Pavicevich Brewing, none other than Ken Pavicevich. Did I say that right? You say it correct. Yeah, I've been practicing. You must have been. This is probably the only microbrewery uh, in the suburbs here in outside Chicagoland that does what you do. Tell me about, before we get into the actual brewing process, tell me how Ken got involved in brewing beer. One of the finest, because I've tasted it, one of the finest beers in this area. Uh, I'm glad you like it, first of all. How we got into it is that I quit a job. I was a corporate vice president of an independent oil company in Chicago, and I wanted to pursue my dream of producing the finest beer in the world. I went out and hired the finest, what we felt, as design firm who had built breweries on five continents. They built the Polar Brewing Company in Venezuela, Carlings in Canada, Carlings in Ireland, Polar in Venezuela, Swan in Perth, Australia. I sought them out and then I found who I wanted to be, the finest brewmaster in the world, Doug Babcock. We knew if we can get a really quality design firm and a quality brewmaster, we can produce the type of beer that we really wanted. Something for the American palate that's as European as European comes. What is the difference between the Baderbrau beer, which you produce, than other beers that are maybe produced in America or in Germany? What is produced in Germany, they brew all their beers according to Reinhardtskapat, which is the Bavarian purity law of the year 1516. It only allows four ingredients, malted barley, hops, yeast, and water, and that's it. Nothing so else can no go into beer. No preservatives or no additives or chemicals? No or anything. chemicals, nothing. It's all natural all the way. We do not pasteurize the beer, and when our beer is poured, it's a true Pilsner beer. The head on our beer is at one inch and looks like whipped cream, one inch above the rim of the glass and does not drip down the sides of the glass. And it tastes like a milkshake, to be honest. It's, uh, it's, uh, we feel that, too, and we've been told that by a few people also. How long has uh, the Pavicevich Brewing Company been here in Elmhurst? We went public in May of 1988. We had uh, raised $500,000 in a private placement first. We bought the land, put the footing and foundation in. We went public in May of 88 to get the funds to raise the rest of the brewery. We went, came out, we just finished, let's see, we finished the brewery construction in February. We brewed first on February 12th of this year, of 1989, and beer started flowing on May, March 13th, 1989. So, so you're, you're fairly new. Brand new. We're only out for five weeks, and that's it. And where is, the, the Bader Brow is not a beer that you can buy in the store as of yet. I know there's future plans where you can buy the five, what is it, five, five, liter, five, five liter keg. Very good. 
but uh, where can you where can you taste it? Boy, some of the restaurants we now have, we're approaching 50. I think we have 47 or 48 restaurants right now. Places downtown like Accenture, which is Oprah Winfrey's place, Coco Rico, Carl Heinz Granitza's Bar. We're in Lashitz on Irving Park. We're in Mirabelle, Shaw's Crab House, Chicago Hilton and Towers, Hamburger Hamlet, Shenanigans, Durkin's. We're in, we're in quite a few bars. So what you would say probably your, your finer restaurants in lounges or bars down in the in downtown area? Correct. We're in downtown areas. We're also in the suburbs. We're in Hula Hands. We're in Chicago Claim Company. We're in Zerosta's Bar and Grill. We're in uh, Countryside. We've got a place called the Country House. That's a really fine place also. We've got quite a few. What do people say when they taste Baderbrow for the first time? They'll first say, wow, is this a different taste? You know, I don't like foam heads. And I'll say, well, I'm used to, you're probably having a foam head that might have something else in it. They might cook with rice. They might cook with corn. So you're tasting a different style of foam head. Ours is like whipped cream, if you have tried it, if you have tasted it. And all of a sudden, they'll say, wow, is this different? And they'll drink it, and they'll say, well, it's different, and I'm not sure if I like it. And after three or four gulps, they'll say, wow, is this a great beer? This is fantastic. And next thing you know, even the females, they said, I, we had a place where the woman said that she only has one beer in that that's it. She had two beers, and she just said that I cannot get over this beer. It's fantastic. My husband will love this beer. It's great. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but in the uh, process when they're serving the beer, they are served in special glasses. Correct. We have a special glass that we bought from Germany Restel. We have the exclusive distribution rights to this glass for all of North America. It's a tulip-shaped glass that brings out all the aroma and all the flavor in this glass so that you're smelling the beer and you're drinking at the same time, getting the full flavor, full aroma hops. Now that you know a little bit about Bader Brown and the history of the Pavitrovich Brewing Company, Ken, would you be ever so kind as to take us through the process of... Oh, oh I'd love to. Brew? I'd love to. I'd love to show you. Okay, and we're going to do that right after this. Let's have a party. The big party's at the With IPA Festival and Convention, August 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th at the Ramada Hotel O'Hare in Rosemont. Featuring 16 of the nation's finest polka bands, Dick Pillar, Ray J, Zug Islanders, The Sounds, Polka Motion, and B-Sharps. There'll be a polka mask, queen contest, pool party, jam session, and the Hall of Fame banquet. For tickets and information, call the IPA at 254-7771. August 3rd through the 6th, the IPA Festival and Convention in Chicago, the biggest party in history. Chicagoland's leader in van and truck accessories is Keystone Supply. Sales, service, installations. Now at their new and spacious location, 4600 West Lawrence Avenue. Whether it's one truck or a fleet, Keystone has the equipment and service you need. Chicagoland's foremost name in van and truck equipment. They stock and carry a complete inventory of racks, shelves, cross boxes, saddle boxes, as well as ladders and tools. 15 years experience, call 736-4124 Keystone at their new location, 4600 West Lawrence Avenue in Chicago. Shots and beers, and now I'm so alone. I lost my car, I lost my wife, I lost my mortgage home. I sit here at the bar each night, but please don't pity me. Forty years of shots and beers, and now I'm fancy free. For forty years, I come home from the bar late every night. My wife would take one look at me, and then we start to fight. She put my suitcase on the porch one day and said to me, Get out of here, you don't love me. You of your shots and beers, 40 years of shots and beers, hey bartender, loud and clear, tell those girls come over here, and I'll buy them a shot and beer. Shots and beers, and now I'm fancy free. I got a different girl each night to keep me company. They cook, they clean, they wash my shorts, they take good care of me. Forty years of shots and beers, I'm happy as can be. Forty years of shots and beers. Hey, bartender, loud and clear.
Okay, we're back with Ken now, and we're going to go step by step through the process of the uh, Bader Brow Brewing. We are at the first segment. What do we do here? This here is a malt mill. This comes from Germany. It's from Kunzel. It's a four roller. And we mill our own malt to the correct texture that we want to get all the natural sugars out of the grain that we use on a malted barley. So we'll run it through here and store behind you 2,000 pounds of malt for our brew. And we're all set in here, and it takes him about an hour to run it through this material 2,000 pounds. Now there's oh, 2,000 pounds of, of uh Malted the barley. malt goes in. Okay. Correct. Now, I understand that this is an expensive item, and there's not too many in existence. Well, they're, they're in existence out in Europe, but I doubt that there'll be too many here in America right now. It is a very expensive item. Why this and not something else? We felt this was the best for our product. We, wanted, we do not want to compromise our quality in any way, and we wanted to get all the natural extract out of the grain itself, so we don't, do not have to add sugar. We do not have to add anything else into it on the sides. We just take everything out of the grain. And this machine right here, this malt mill, does that for us. So this is a purifier, in essence? Uh, no, in essence, it just breaks it down to the type of texture that we want. Okay. All right, now on to step two, right? On to step two. Okay. Step number two, we are now inside the brew house, I guess you would call it. Correct. And what, what transpires here? What happens? In the brew house, you've got the malt that comes over on a conveyor system overhead and comes into our mash slaughter tun. The grain is deposited inside the mash slaughter tun, where we then start mixing it with hot water, put some heat on it so that we get all the natural sugars to come out of the grain. So now everything is done then fed into the copper kettle Correct. here. Correct. As the liquid goes through behind us and goes into the copper brew kettle, it's still called wort. It's not there yet. The wort goes into the brew kettle where it comes in through gravity and we then start boiling it and throw our hops in there and we have hopping stages. Okay. And as you can see, the beer is boiling right now at this present time. After it's in there for the length of time that we want, and the fire is heating on the bottom of the kettle, it's flame brewing, everything is just like Europe in here. When we're through with it on the boiling stage, we then come through and we go through a wart cooler. This is a heat exchange over here where cold water comes across at 40 degrees and interchanges through plates at, one, at 212 degree water and they change each other where then we go into the, brew, into the cold room, and on the cold room it's at 52 degrees, and the hot water now goes into this tank over here at 170 degrees. We are now inside, what do you call this? The cold room, the, the fermenting room. And you can, see it is cold too, right? <laughs> it stays in here, the temperature approximately 42 degrees. We need it cool in here at all times. When, on the finishing stages, when we bring in the beer into this room, it's at 52 degrees Fahrenheit, and once the yeast is injected into the tank, it takes seven days for this product to become fermented. The temperature of the tanks will raise in there, although there's 3,000 gallon capacity, we have about 2,500 gallons per tank, you need a good 15% headroom up there, but the temperature of that tank will raise up to 61 or 62 degrees, even with this room being at 42 degrees. When it first transfers out of the... Uh, out of the brew house, brew house, when it comes in here at 52 degrees. And then after the end of the fermentation cycle, is where the sugars are being changed into alcohol, we then at the end of that period, we go through the dimples, Glycol goes through the dimples here, and we co cool down the tank down to 33 degrees to bring all the yeast down. And from there, we age it for approximately 21 more days. So it's a 28-day cycle, approximately. What about all these tubes that we're looking at right now in between here? These tubes in here are all connecting, whether it be the glycol going through, the electricity. Everything is connected. In and out. You can see down through this walkway down here. We're below the walkway. And everything in here is connected in between tanks so we can transfer everything with beer hoses. We've got electricity going to every tank. We have everything that we need all along in this piping system here. What about these? What are these charts on the sides of each kettle here? These charts, we take tests during the course of the day uh, every day, each day of every week, all through the entire 28-day cycle that we will test, we'll look at the gravity, we'll take various tests to make sure everything is fermented properly, aged properly, things like that. Hi, hello, how are you? Why don't you all come in? Yeah. Eddie Bozoinchik presents Chicago's biggest annual polka spectacular, the 1989 Bel Air Polka Day, July 7th, 8th, and 9th at the Sabre Room, 8900 West 95th Street in Hickory Hills, Illinois, featuring 11 top polka bands, Eddie Blazonczyk Versatones, Stash Galunka, Jerry Zahara, from California, the polka family, Stash Balanda, the Southside Sound, Ample Airs Plus, many, many more. There'll be food refreshments, concessions, and fun galore. Advance ticket 650 at the door 7. A special three-day pass is only $18. For more information, contact Bella Enterprise.
specializes at 7208 South Harlem Avenue in Bridgeview or call 594-5182. Don't miss Chicago's biggest annual polka spectacular, Eddie Bozoinchik's Bel Air Polka Days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, July 7th, 8th, and 9th at the Sabre Room in Hickory Hills, Illinois. I do my banking at Tallman because they believe in the same things I do, hard work and hard working people. And that's made Tallman the largest savings and loan in Illinois. And thousands of people have bought their homes through Tallman and thousands more save for their future there. I never worry about the fine print at Tallman. They treat me right. If it's important to you, go to Tallman. They'll treat you right too. A great financial institution dedicated to people who know what it means to work for a living. his arm playing ball so I stopped for a beer to bring me some cheer and I didn't get home for a year for a year I stopped for a beer to bring me some cheer and I didn't get home for a year someone went and slashed all my tires some kids set my back porch on fire so I stopped some cheer and I didn't get home for a year for a year I stopped for a beer to bring me some cheer and I didn't get home for a year Get home for a year, for a year. I stopped for a beer to bring me some cheer, and I didn't get home for a year. My wife, she's as mad as can be. She asked me what happened to me. So I stopped for a beer to bring me some cheer, and I didn't get home for a year, for a year. I stopped for to bring me some cheer and I didn't get home for a year Pardon the pun, but it boils down to this, right? <laughs> Correct. Very good. Okay. Very good. It's all in this uh, 5,000 plus gallon capacity uh, keg or it's, not it's a called keg. a bright beer bright tank. Bright beer tank. Okay. It's a bright beer tank. It's a finished beer tank. It's now ready to go into the consumer's hands, into the consumer's palate, etc. We then can start kegging it right from here. Now, is each keg individually done by one person? Correct. We There's have, not a machine or anything that comes. No, we have a machine that cleans the kegs, and then we manually fill each and every keg. So what, what's the process? I mean, do, you, do you keg out of a whole uh, 
beer, bright beer tank out of, out of one week or? Correct, it's, it's depending on what we're being shipping, what we're shipping out and which products in here. We can have various products. We can have a light beer in here, a dark beer. Excuse, don't use the term light because it's a generic term now. We can have an amber colored beer here, a beta bra. We can have a dark beer in here or an ale in here. So we have two bright beer tanks, so giving us flexibility of what product we're shipping out. But you only you only brew one one type of beer, is that not correct? At the present time, our flagship is, uh, is beta bra. And from then on, though, we can brew specialty products throughout the course of the year. So how many kegs do you get out of this tank at one time? This, this tank right here, this bright beer tank, approximately 400 to 425 kegs at one given point in time. Do you think we could get maybe uh, some beer out of this You'd tank? You'd like to try a little I, other I bright beer tank? It just so happens there's a glass here. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that amazing how that works out? <laughs> just so happens we have a glass right here. We hook in. Let's, let's get a little... Coming out of here, and here comes some of that nice, beautiful beer. Let's see if I can shut this off correctly. Whoa. And out comes the finished product. Looks a little bit like a milkshake or whipped cream on the start. Yeah. So now we just let this stand for a while, and then you'll see the... Uh, uh, this looks lighter than the other. Is there any... No, it's the same color as the rest. We use the same malts for everything that we're doing right now. So it looks in here because you've got the orange overhead ah, lights. okay. Delicious. Yeah, I bet you say it all the time. No, no, <laughs> honest to God. Well, right now we are joined by the vice president and master brewer here at Pavichovich Brewing, Doug Babcook. Tell me about how you came involved here in Pavichovich Brewing. Well, I'll give you a short resume of my brewing career. I started in 56 after university with uh, Canadian breweries, now presently Carling O'Keefe in uh, Canada as an apprentice brewmaster. I was there for 15 years, laterally as brewmaster of their largest plant. And then I went to uh, Stroh in 69. I was 17 years with Stroh in Detroit and uh, left there as the senior vice president of uh, brewing. And I was doing some, I went into my own consulting business, doing some work with uh, microbreweries over the past uh, four years. and. Uh, met Ken through uh, mutual uh, contacts and uh, I was very impressed with what he had in mind and it uh, certainly dovetailed with what I had in mind as being the ultimate in products and uh, we arrived at this point. And you two gentlemen traveled all over Europe tasting beer as I recall. Yes, we did and uh, we found that uh, the three of us, uh, including Pete Peterson, that we pretty well agreed on our idea or concept of what was the ultimate in fine products. Your title brewmaster, exactly what does that entail here? Well, it involved uh, a good measure of uh, influence in the design of the equipment for uh, the making of Brader Brow. It involved the formulation and also the training of the people to actually uh, produce it when we started up. Well, thank you for being with us and uh, good luck and uh, Nastrovia, as they say, right? <laughs> <laughs>
zdrowie chłopcze, na zdrowie, Ej, na zdrowie chłopcze, na żywę wybijemy, będziemy śpiewać, polkę tańcować, na zdrowie wszystkim, hej, na zdrowie. The big party's at the IPA Festival and Convention, August 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th at the Ramada Hotel O'Hare in Rosemont. Featuring 16 of the nation's finest polka bands, Dick Pillar, Ray J, Zug Islanders, The Sounds, Polka Motion, and B-Sharps. There'll be a polka mask, queen contest, pool party, jam session, and the Hall of Fame banquet. For tickets and information, call the IPA at 254-7771. August 3rd through the 6th, the IPA Festival and Convention in Chicago, the biggest party in history. Well, that's the whole process, and uh, it seems like an awful lot, though, but the beer is excellent, so it, like it's it. worth it, you know what I mean? And uh, the one thing, though, I have to point out, that this brew house here is, is immaculate, it's clean, it's... Well, throughout Europe, the brew house is the jewel of every brewery, and we want it to show well. Again, I cannot express enough that cleanliness is next to godliness in a brewery. We ha cannot have any bacteria in here. But in our brew house here, we went, we have tile from, that we imported from Italy and Germany. We want everything done right so we look like a typical German Czechoslovakian brewery that's just the jewel of the brewery in the brew house. Now, the Bader Brau, as we mentioned at the top of the show, is available in fine restaurants. And it also soon will be available in a five liter take home, if that does come soon, where would that be available? At just about any... Uh... No, we'll probably select a few locations, a few downtown, a few out west, that we'd have the five liter container for the take home market. That's about three to five months away. And that beer would be shipped directly from here cold, and you would buy it cold. Now, what if, what if the beer sits out for a couple of days? It uh, loses... No. Uh... Our beer is unpasteurized, so it has to be refrigerated at all times, and that beer will be as fresh as what you just tasted out of the right beer tank. That's how fresh that beer will be. Well, I, mu I must say that this is, a, it was interesting, and not only interesting, it was, a, it's fantastic. I, I never saw anything like this before in my life. I wish you and Pavicevic Brewing and the Bader Brow Beer the, the best always, and uh, May you live a hundred, as they say, right? <laughs> a lot. Yeah, thank, right, exactly. Thank, thank you very much, and I'd like to know if you can come back and try now a smooth beer from the tapping system. I'd love to. Great. Ken, thank you. Thank Appreciate you very it. much. Thank you. TC, Ethnic Television Chicago, Cable, bringing you the world in a wire.